Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to jump into Bitcoin, XRP, and Theta and the rest of the altcoin market as well with total three. Fed Powell is speaking a 50 basis point cut. Markets are very volatile right now on the small time frames. So what does the Federal Reserve really have to say? Well, listen to what Trump has to say about the central bank and crypto. Join me live on Twitter Spaces at 8 p.m. this September 16th for the launch of World Liberty Financial. We're embracing the future with crypto and leaving the slow and outdated big banks behind. We're embracing the future with crypto and leaving the slow and outdated big banks behind. So there you go. Uh, we'll see what happens in regards with the election, but I believe Trump's going to win. I believe you could see his son is already starting with DeFi and things like that. So they are openly embracing crypto. And by the way, the whole system we live in today is slow, clunky. It's degrading. There's recessions every 10 years, right? I mean, it's uh, it's really ridiculous because the the real way the United States has dominated through the fiat currency system is through force. I mean, just look at the wars in the Middle East, right? But you can't be a dominant power if you're not sort of being dominant, right? But what does crypto do? It decent it it basically levels the playing field, right? So if we don't as a country, uh, as a nation, embrace crypto, then the rest of the world will, and we're just going to be left behind. So we have no choice, right? With that being said, what side of the trade should we all be on? The short side or the long side? Well, over the long run, it's we should be on the macro. Uh, I mean, we should be on the long side of the macro trade. So uh, what's the price doing right now? I mean, let's look here uh the five minute chart and you can see we had i mean look at this i mean it's just perfect look at this we came down right we had fed powell speaking right and what happened we had a big pump to the upside then we pulled back and then uh or i'm sorry the press release came out we had the pump we pulled back then fed powell started speaking we continued to go higher but it doesn't matter um, about that because what do we see? We see a beautiful three-wave pullback. I mean, look at that. We had what seems like to be uh, this impulse to the upside and a three-wave pullback. And now we came right back to the resistance. And now we're sort of hopefully we're flagging out in here and we can continue this up thrust. Um, this momentum to the upside right now there are you know I wouldn't be I wouldn't bet on any direction today because usually when the Fed speaks it's like I said it's extremely volatile I mean he can start speaking we could get a big move up and then when it's all over with we could just continue going uh, down we can see we're getting some selling pressure at the moment um, you can see we came up, we had a little bit of um, bearish divergence here. We got a three-way pullback. Let's see if we can sort of hold. And I'm only looking at the small time frames because of today, right? Today is Fed day, so you wanna look in at microscopically to see what's going on. Um, but it doesn't change the overall direction, right? I mean. The thing about Fed Day and and then the decision to cut rates, yes, you get a volatile day, but it's the real effects don't um, happen right away, right? So when we look back three to six months from now, you know, where's it going to be? That's going to be, you know, overall priced in, right? People trade the news, they trade the event, they trade the the happening, right? But the long term effects have a bigger effect on crypto than just what happens today. So even if we did pump today or even if we did dump, it's not going to change the overall um, 
direction of the crypto market because people knew that they were going to cut rates, right? We already knew this was going to happen. So it's being priced in, right? Uh, so we just have to wait and see. But we're still at this major, major inflection point. Um, you can see we're right back in these levels here. I mean, this was uh, a very significant level right at 60K or so. Um, you can see all of this was support in here. I mean, many, many touch points, support, right? Support, and then you can see down here, we held it as resistance, right? Now we're back at resistance again, and you can see all through here. I mean, this is just a major area. So I believe whatever happens in regards to the next move is it basically we're in this zone right here so whatever the next move is going to be rather it be breaking to the upside right or even breaking to the downside that's going to determine um are we going to get that fifth wave and go or is this either is this going to be a more complex fourth wave uh for example we have a three wave move up and this could be a three wave move down before we get that move to the upside but if we do that and we come back up and we get rejected again or even worse we come down we get rejected here then we're going to look at like we're going into reaccumulation right we're going to be going into reaccumulation if we fail this level so this is a very key area like i said we're at a major inflection point so um let's go back to where we left off before which is we were looking at some fractals right um and particularly this fractal here right and you know we can go back three months ago uh, we were sharing this fractal. Um, so it's nice that other people are seeing it as well, and that shows some confluence in the overall move, right? So if I just take, um, you know, a bars pattern of this, um, whoops, what happened there? Uh, there we go, a bars pattern here. Um, by the way, what's interesting, and I didn't know this, and uh, but uh, it was pointed out to me that right here, right at the top here, and as we started going down, that's when the Fed started its cutting or its hiking cycle. So we started hiking rates, and that's where we got the big dump, right? So that is interesting because when we take this fractal, right? and we flip it upside down, right? And we expand it a little bit so that we can get it a, a, a nice match here. Um, you know, it's not perfect, nothing ever is, but you can kind of see the wave structure here in, in this uh, area. But what's interesting is um, if you flip this upside down, right? Um, this is right where we're getting the cutting cycle now so the cutting cycle is coming in right in here so you can kind of see we're coming down and now we're flagging out you can see this bear flag here and that's where the cutting cycle um, starts right so when i flip it right side up and i go back over here the same exact fractal just inversed you can see right here this is where the hiking cycle began and that's when we started to dump so it's just weird how all of that sort of lined up right so now what is it going to be right is it going to be uh, a breakout to the upside or is it going to be a breakdown uh, to the downside now you could make arguments for both cases for example as you lower rates money becomes cheaper the dollar becomes cheaper or the dollar becomes weaker and money borrowing money becomes cheaper which means you know, your purchasing power kind of goes down a little bit. So the overall thesis should be that crypto should go higher, right? Because lower rates equals more inflation. More inflation equals a weaker dollar. Weaker dollar equals um, a higher Bitcoin price, right? So if the cutting, if the, if the hiking cycle, let me get it all in one frame here. 
If the hiking cycle started exactly here and we started dumping to the downside, right? Then, and we have this same sort of structure just inversely. And you could see right here, this is one, or I'm sorry, let me do it from here. This is one, two, three, four, and five. So this is a fourth wave inversely. Same thing here, we have one, two, three, four. So it's always the fourth waves. Fourth waves are always the most trickiest waves to get right. And also the B waves. So for a fourth wave and a B wave, those are always very interesting. Usually the B waves are traps and usually fourth waves are have multiple traps in them. Um, so they could very, very well be long and, and drawn out. And usually wave twos are pretty deep as far as retracements go, but we can see this wave two was very bullish. And the idea here is that we're gonna get a fifth wave to the upside because of its fourth wave nature, right? I mean, usually a fourth wave or any wave, we have a wave one, wave two, wave three, and then we have a wave four. And wave fours are going down and we're, we, they sort of flag out and then they break out. Well, if you look here, I mean, that's sort of exactly what's happening here. Right, it might take a little longer, but the point is we're gonna get it. Uh, you know, not financial advice. We might not get it, but uh, it might it might have to be, um, you know, some sort of reaccumulation, right? Where we have to come down and we have to back test between thirty and forty five k. You know, it varies. It, it just depends, but basically in this range. Um, you know, going into reaccumulation and then breaking out at a later time. And reaccumulation is, for example, when you look at like XRP, uh, let me show you here. We have a clear reaccumulation structure. And it, this one took a long time, but hey, it is what it is. We had a rise, a crash, a retrace. We came down into reaccumulation. We go sideways and then we break out at a later time. So it could be possible that Bitcoin is right here and we still have to go down and go sideways and then continue higher, which would completely suck. But hey, um, you know, it is what it is. I don't and, and I don't think it'll take that long, especially because we're getting a new president. And uh, but the overall direction will be up with a, uh, you know, a new administration. But between now and the election and all the election chaos that will instill, believe me, it's gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot. This is a fight to the death, really. I mean, whoever, it, they're not gonna let it go, right? They're not gonna give it up. And uh, that, that, that's why you can see there's another assassination attempt on Donald Trump. It's, it, it's not the fact that they don't like him it's the fact that he is going to ruin their party, right? Basically, the establishment has created this environment that benefits them through treason, corruption, uh, lies, propaganda, narratives, uh, tyranny, control, right? It, it, it gives them this source of power. And Donald Trump is a threat to their system, through their power hold. That's why he's a target. That's why they, they're so hell-bent at going after him. Now, if I was the leader of the Democrat Party, I could totally maybe, maybe beat Donald Trump. You know how I can do it? Don't talk about him. The reason why Trump became so powerful is because the mainstream media continued to attack him with, with uh, impeachment, with convictions, right? With all these different things trying to get them. And all it did, assassination attempt, all it did is just make him stronger. So if you, if, if the deep state really wanted to win, if they're listening to this, all they have to do is just ignore them. Just they, like for example, Kamala Harris, don't talk about Trump. Talk about your policies. Talk about who you are. Talk about what you represent. Talk about what you're gonna do. Pretend Donald Trump doesn't even exist, right? If they can, if the mainstream media, they, they can't do it because it's 24 seven, Trump, 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 get him, get him, get him. He's a threat to democracy. He's a threat to democracy. 
right? And then you have all these raged and stilled people who are brainwashed, who, can, who repeatedly hear the same thing that they try to go after them. So, you know, what does this have to do with crypto? Well, it has to do with everything with crypto because whoever wins this battle really will set the course and the direction for our investment that we work so hard to get. So it's important that we sort of, you know, talk about it from time to time so that we can really understand. Now, I, this is my opinion and this is the way I see it. Maybe you have a difference of opinion, but that's okay because at the same time, there's a common denominator that we have in common even if you don't agree, which is what? Crypto, right? Which is making money. And that's what it's all about, is trying to get ahead in this really godforsaken world we live in. And uh, I think ultimately it will be cleaned up, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. So anyway, uh, a little rant there for everybody. Uh, I think, you know, this fractal is is okay right but i did share a brand new fractal two of them actually one with theta and another one with bitcoin and i'm going to bring that one up right in a second here so it's right here you can see it on the one hour chart you can see you know we had a sort of a, a complex correction in here right uh you could say w x w x y x z right something like that um, you know, this one's not perfect either, but it kind of gives you a sense of what flagging out looks like and what the structure sort of looks like where you break, you know, you have a wave one, you have a wave two, you have a very extended wave three, then you flag out for this wave four. So if we take this wave four and we overlay it, there we go. Now we got our two fractals up here. So you can kind of see, um, some striking similarities here. Uh, so let me actually, and I, and I, again, I highly recommend, I didn't put out a video out yesterday, but the day before I went, uh, I think it was like an 85 minute video going in depth over all of these. So, um, but you know, I could just turn on, whoops, some color codes in here. And you can see this area resembles here. We drop down, same here, we drop down, we come back up, right? Equal highs, come back up, equal highs. Um, and then we start coming on down here um, to the downside, right? Come down to the downside, we pop the high, and then we make another low, we pop a high, and then we make another low. Now this one sort of made equal lows. This one made a slightly lower low, but then you kind of see, we kind of made this, you know, kind of wonky looking five-way move. And then we had a three-way pullback. So I'm wondering if we get something like this, right? So that that's, you know, time will tell. And again, we have these two fractals here um, that can sort of give us a little bit of a, a guideline of how complex corrections work. Now, each one of them is going to be different. It's not always going to be the same. So, you know, it's just something to look out for. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in regards to this one, you can see these two equal highs here, right? These two equal highs here, right? You can see the top there, right? Obviously, here's the top here. And then we come slamming back down making another low down in here right same thing we came down making another low now we have this move back up right so let's see if we can get this move back in the right direction right so uh as far as the small time frames go i mean nothing's really changed obviously the idea is still number one this is w x y x z this is a one, this is an expanded flat for wave two, and this is a wave one of three, maybe a little bit higher, we pull back, and then we get that third, fourth, and fifth for wave three. So that would be wave one, wave two, wave three, then we would get a wave four, then we would go up and get a wave five. I mean, that's the idea, right? That's, that's the idea, so of uh, how we can see it going down. And the way we know this is because Elliott Wave 
theory is, you know, it's all theory based, but it's based off wave structure and, uh, you know, counting the waves. Is it a three wave move? Is it a corrective move? Is it a five wave move? I mean, usually markets move in fives and three. You got a one, two, three, four, five wave move there. You got a three wave pullback. You got a one, two, three, four, five wave move there. And now you're getting this pullback, right? So you have a one or two or three or four. Let's get a five. So that's the W, X, Y, X, Z. The other same count, it's just labeled a little different, which is what? This is one, two, three, four, five, A. This is a three wave move, that's a B. And then we have a five wave move down fast and furious, that's a C, right? And then if we look closely, we can see a wave one, and then we have a wave two, right? That's an expanded flat. Now, those are the two bullish ideas. And then both of them mean more upside to come, right? So let's talk about the bearish idea. There's actually four ideas. There's two bearish ideas. Actually, there's two bearish. Actually, there's, I guess, two and a half, maybe three bearish ideas. And then one, uh, I'm sorry, two bullish ideas and two bearish ideas. But the one I'm about to show you isn't really that bearish. And here we go. So if this is three down, that's a W, and this is three back up, that's an X. And now we have one, two, three back down, that is a Y. So that the whole thing becomes W flat X, Y. So that whole thing is a one, two, three. It's a three wave move to the downside. The reason why it's hard for people to count three wave moves is because all they see is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But you gotta, Elliott Wave is about connecting the dots, right? So if this is the bearish idea, or it's actually not bearish, but it's bearish in the short term, and then we get the move higher. So W, X, Y, we make another low, we probably go down to maybe, you know, 45K or so. Uh, I would say more like 47. Uh, I would say between 47 and maybe 50K, and then we go higher. So that's that idea. So that's the third idea, right? So now let's jump into the fourth idea. The fourth idea is the most bearish, which is what? Which is that this could be, um, you know, a one, two, a one, two, a one, two, a one, two. And we're about to freaking fall hardcore down into a wave three, right? So these, this is a nest of one, two, one, twos, which means we get a very powerful wave three. You know, here's your support here. We come down, we, we come up, we retest it as resistance, right? So it's going to start looking like that WXY we just talked about. We break the low, but then it comes up and then we get rejected here and then it keeps coming down and then it goes up later on. So this will take a lot of time. This will take maybe the whole next, uh, maybe another six months to a year, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's why they call it reaccumulation because people don't reaccumulate in a day or a, a, a week. You know, it takes time to accumulate large positions, right? Because, uh, you know, you work at a job, you get a paycheck, you know, you, you throw some of that paycheck in there. Um, but then over time, you get a lot of paychecks and you get more of that reaccumulation. Because I have no doubt in my mind that people are looking at the current environment, the current system itself, the Federal Reserve, the central banking system, the fiat paper debt system. And they're looking at crypto and they know crypto is anti-dollar. They know crypto is an anti-debt instrument. So smart money over time, not I'm talking about trading in and out. I'm not talking about trading back and forth. I'm talking about macro longevity. They are accumulating uh, large positions. So even if we did come down here, right, they're gonna take that as a discount. This would, coming down all the way between, you know, into reaccumulation between 30 and 45K, 
that's actually going to be bullish because it's going to allow a lot of people to buy crypto that otherwise missed the move because look at this move here you know we we started off at 20 you know 25k at the bottom and then we went all the way up to seventy four thousand dollars this whole wave here is uh i think a fifty thousand dollar move almost let's see just about um yeah almost fifty thousand so forty eight thousand dollar move and then you know it, it corrected right a little bit back down to 50k but that's about it right so people who miss this move or people who want to add to their positions they might feel like you know what that's not enough of a discount you know it, it got down to like 50k i bought the dip but it's still not enough of a discount for for some people so maybe some people are waiting for lower prices maybe it comes maybe it doesn't that's the whole thing right so that's why dollar cost averaging is the best way if i had five thousand dollars to spend on crypto and i threw it all in here and then we went down i would feel like an idiot but if i put maybe a little bit here and then it goes up then i'm gonna feel like i missed out but at least i got something in so you, no matter what you never truly win unless it's over the macro the long term situation because a lot of times people buy crypto and then two days later it dumps below the price where they bought it so they always feel like i just lost i lost i lost right but it's not about you know the game isn't over right does is um you know did michael jordan complain that they were down in the first quarter no it's only the first quarter we still got the second quarter we still got halftime right um so you know it's just because you buy and you know buying responsibly not you know throwing everything you have at it um but dollar cost averaging responsibly and it coming down that's okay that's part of the overall strategy right again it's only the first quarter we still got three more quarters to go so just because we're down now you know but i would say most people are are up right because let me go back now let's go to theta here and i'm going to get into the small time uh analysis if i can find it real quick where'd you go here oh theta actually had a nice uh let me go to the four hour chart look at that four hour engulfing candle that theta had look at that that's a powerhouse candle we were down here, it was looking a little bearish, and then bam, it took it all back. So now it's getting held up here in uh, resistance, right? And I'm gonna show you the theta fractal in just a second. But like I was saying before, I think most people are up, right? Because my whole message all through here, or actually was right through here around 64 cents. I was right when I started doing um videos was in october so we're actually coming up on the one year anniversary of this channel coming up in october basically what i my main message in this area was that this was reaccumulation and that we should see a retracement and that's exactly what we got we got a retracement now it was a little bit lower than i would like i would have liked to seen it get a little bit higher especially up to that four, 470 to five dollar area um, but hey, we got a retracement nonetheless, right? So, and if you look at where we're at, we're still way above our entry price from way down here at 60 something cents, right? So when I put it like that, uh, you know, we're still up, you know, 120% or so. Um, but it doesn't matter, right? Because most, I would imagine a lot of people who invest in the theta have been getting it all in this zone. This was our reaccumulation zone, right? So now we're sort of back testing this zone, right? Now there could be some people who bought up here, right? I know I bought when we had this three-way move back down, I did buy a little bit here, right? Um, now, 
for a trade, for uh, for a spot position, it really depends. Now, if it was a trade, I could have got stopped out right here. If it's for my hodl position, you know, I just take it out, put it on a on a on a hard wallet, and just let it ride, right? Because I know eventually what what's going to happen. We're going to get a retracement. So um, now, when I look at this chart, I am calling for a retracement back to the upside that's what i believe is going to happen now i could be wrong we could keep going down and if we do go down right we also have to worry about the election the the chaos um that's going to happen and uh there could be a, another black swan event a market crash i mean there's a lot of things that could happen but if everything stays okay, which is also a, a decent possibility, I think we're going higher, right? That's what I believe. And I'm gonna show you a fractal um, to support that argument. But then also I'll uh, show a couple other things as well. First of all, you can see this downward resistance line. We're starting to break out here, right? And you can see here's your head right we were talking about this an inverse head and shoulders so the current target is about a dollar 86 a dollar 90 right i've been talking about a dollar 90 for a long time and i think i think uh we're gonna get it soon hopefully um so uh you know what's the main idea here for theta well the main idea and let me go to the uh the other theta chart here right here so let me get the whole picture in here go up to the three-day chart so when we look at the whole chart right let's just let's just remember where we're at here right so we start off building a base going sideways which is very bullish you can see right a shoulder a head a shoulder inverse head and shoulders right but more than that we can also see, I don't know what the trading history was before this, um, but we can see a three-way pullback. A, B, C. We've seen this three-way pullback. So if you can imagine the price coming up, we have a three-way pullback, right? And then we expanded like no one's business. I mean, we went from less than a cup, uh, you know, less than a nickel all the way up to you know almost fifteen dollars that's a huge move there right and then we cur and then if you take this whole move like i've been saying and you cut it in half that's usually where you go right you take the whole move you cut it in half and that's where we went right and then once we got down here what did we do we created a base and what was this base this was a sort of a slanted y cough accumulation you had your move here back up down into your spring you grab that liquidity and then we shot back up and that shooting back up we now we're getting rejected right at the sort of this resistance area which is okay but look at the reason why is because we're coming back down here to fill in that gap look at uh let me take everything off because it's getting a little bit cluttered here so if we look right here, um, as soon as we broke that to the downside, it was a free fall, right? Same thing up here. As soon as we broke it to the upside, it was straight up. And when we break it to the downside, it was straight down. So there's like an air pocket right here and right here, right? So as soon, you know, as theta was, um, sort of you know accumulating down here and we broke out we came all the way back up to this area right but look you still have this gap here and you still have the gap here and look as soon as we came up we sliced right through it we came down we sliced right through it and look what happened again as soon as we broke that number a dollar 30 or so what did we do again we sliced right through it again so that's how you know this is a weak spot in the structure of the the chart 
So you can see right here, we went straight up. So it's happened three times, right? So there's not a lot of volume profile. There's not a lot of trading history within that range. It's kind of like an open pocket, right? Like an air pocket, it, it, it gets sucked right through or, or you know, up or down, right? So what happens? Well, we come up and we get rejected in the same spot right up here. And then what happens? And then we come all the way down to back test it, right? We're back testing it now. But look at all this intricate work. Instead of, you know, see how we we came up we really fast, we came down real fast, we came up, but now look, we're taking our time going down. So I think this correction was needed. I think this correction was important. I think this correction Basically, what it did is it filled in all the gaps. It created a volume profile between the prices of $1.30 and say uh, like $3.50, you know, because again, during the bull cycle, we sliced right through it like it wasn't there. During the bear cycle, we sliced right through it like it wasn't there. And then again on the retracement. So it made sense that we come down and we back test the top of it. So now that we succeeded, what did we do? We filled in the gap. And we did so with a, you know, a one, two, three, four, five, six, a seven wave crashing structure type of move, right? And, you know, similar like on the way down, like one, two, right? You got um, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so it's, you know, it's a typical crashing type of structure. So, so now that we corrected our way down, now that we, we, we succeeded and, um, and, and back testing and we sort of filled in the gap. Now, what do we expect? Well, you can see what we're doing down here. We're developing a base on the top of this here, because that this, all of this was resistance. We broke that resistance. We came all the way down and now we're back testing it. So now what? Now we want to see it come back up. So here's point A, here's point B. So now the overall idea is for what? To come back into the retracement levels. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to see. We want to get back into the retracement levels. And then from there, we can reevaluate if this is going to come down, which I don't think so, right? Or we have, you know, uh, sort of a, a five wave move to the upside. We flag out at the, cause we're gonna get stalled out between $1.90 and $3. It's gonna happen. We're gonna have a lot of resistance in here. We're gonna stall out for maybe a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, but then eventually it's gonna make a decision. So one, two, three, it's gonna be a fourth wave of some kind. It's always those nasty fourth waves. And then eventually we'll break out, hopefully, right? So that's my idea. That's my main idea. That's what I think is going to happen. So now, just because the way I've gotten a draw, it doesn't mean it's going to happen today or tomorrow. It's going to take a lot of time for it to happen. But that's the overall idea. And then here's the big, big, big thing. Once we break this area back to the upside, then it's a f we're definitely going up to almost ten dollars at that point so how does how wait how does that sound guys how does that sound a ten dollar theta i mean that sounds really tasty right about now so yeah we're gonna get up here and then from there you know we probably have a little bit more resistance but then at that point that's when we really want to push out and break the all-time high and officially go into expansion. And now we're looking at 20, 30, 40, even 50, even $60 theta on the horizon. And yes, you heard that correctly, $60. And why do I say $60? Because if you look at the standard retracement of a crypto move, right? Um, actually, let me get this to, uh, yeah. So this is actually on log scale. So the one, uh, the 272 and the 414 is between 41 and $66. That's common, right? But even if we wanted to be conservative and look at it on linear scale, you still have the 4.236 extension 
at $67. And that's typical for a wave three, right? So, or even a wave five. So if this is one, two, and now we're gonna get three, so be it. If this is one, two, three, four, five, so be it. Usually the fifth waves are an extension, right? You get, especially in the crypto market, right? So what does all this mean? It just means we gotta be patient. It's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna happen, we just, gotta, we just gotta be patient. Now, what about the bearer scenario? Is there any scenario where this thing continues going down? Yes, but I don't think so right now. I think we gotta come up. If we come up, then it's very possible we can come down. But from here, where we are now, coming down is very unlikely. Why? Because we've already came down a lot. We've been going down longer than 160 something days here. Let's see, let's take a measurement from the very top of the wave all the way to the very bottom. That's 150 days plus all the days that we're in now, which is the total would be where we are right now. That's almost 200 days we've been going down, correcting, consolidating, okay? Not only is between 150 and 200 days, but we have a completed, we have a completed uh, one, two, three, four, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, right? And then that's five, and then you roll up to six, and then you come down for seven. And that is a completed crashing structure. Now, let's jump into the juicy stuff. You go, wait a minute, that wasn't the juicy stuff? No, well, 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 well let me show you. So the fractal, uh, I'm gonna show you in just a second, but um, I just wanna emphasize, I mean, this looks bullish. Honestly, this looks very bullish to me um, I did sell a little bit of theta on, on a trade, um, just to sort of hedge my bets because I didn't know if we were going to dump, um, when Fed Powell started speaking. So, you know, I, I sort of deleveraged a little bit here and then the press release came out and it just pumped it shot to the upside. So I'm like, damn, that was pretty quick. So. I'm kind of waiting for it. I'm kind of waiting to get back in a little bit. Um, but I did take some profit here um, with the anticipation, you know, sort of hedging my bets. Because, again, this is a trade, right? And trades can go one way or the other. And it's supposed to be in or out unless you're, you know, swing trading. But I'm looking at this like sort of a one, two, three, right? Four and a five. Or this is an ABC. But um, yeah, taking profits is, is always a, is a good thing. Um, so, but the overall structure here, it looks pretty bullish because, um, you know, we're no longer making lower lows. Uh, we're still, we made a higher low, right? So we haven't made a higher low in some time since back over here, right? And that took some time, right? And by the way, when you look at this, uh, let me flip it upside down. When you look at this correction, that's kind of what Bitcoin is doing right now, right? So you kind of had this kind of this complex correction here, right? It You know, this flagging out sort of nature. But uh, here we go. Here's the fractal here. And you can see it pretty clearly, right? Where basically all we're trying to do is trying to figure out, you know, this wave has been going to the downside right and we're, we're back we're right at support so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out you know obviously when the wave is over and when we're going to start going back to the upside so this is a total you know crashing structure right it's a correction it, you know I, I often say it could be a one two one two right but it, it, it's definitely a crashing structure right so what we're doing is we're trying to compare bitcoin's crashing structure to theta's crashing structure totally different time frames but you know it's the same thing um so the structure is is similar so um let's let's look at it closely so obviously we have our top here we have our top we come down right we come down 
And then what do we do? And then we start flagging out in here, right? Same exact thing what Bitcoin did. We started flagging out, right? Fair enough. And then what did we do? Well, if you look closely, we had one, two, three, four, five. It's exactly what we have here with theta. If I can draw it with my fingers here, one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, so you can see that move to the downside, five wave move, okay? Fair enough, so it's looking really good so far, as far as the structure goes. And then what we see, right, is this move up, and then we get slammed back down. So we have this move up, same exact thing with theta, and then we get slammed back down, right? And so we have all of these points that are matching up. So we have uh, one, or let's start from the top. One, two, three, four, and five, right? So one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five points matching up. And then what's even more interesting is look what happened when we got down here. You can see what happened. We had, um, you know, this sort of, this little, you know, this teepee, you know, like the little teepees. It kind of looks like that, right? Like a little house, like it's like a little triangle. It kind of points up and then it comes down. You know, kind of like a, a a move like that, right? So if we look at, there we go. And now look at theta. It's the same kind of move. It's got that little teepee going on here, right? So if you look what happened after that, we had a one, two, and then we shot all the way up, right? So if this fractal is going to hold true, and eventually it will not hold true, eventually it's going to break away. But the point is, you know, you know, once it breaks away, right, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll know. But um, the point is, is not to figure out when it breaks away. The point is, is to figure out when it's going to reverse. And I think that's what's happening now. So let me zoom out a little bit so we can fit both of them on the screen right so again we rolled over we rolled over we had a one two look at this we had a one two and look what bitcoin did we shot we broke to the upside so if that's gonna if that's gonna be the case then what are we gonna do we're gonna shoot up and we're gonna break this high right and then we'll back test and then we'll make another high a b c we'll kind of go into a wave two just like this wave two here, and then we continue uh, pushing to the upside, right? And that's basically been the main idea even before this fractal. The reason why is because, again, we had a completing crashing structure, and usually when you have seven waves down, you come up and then you flag out, flag out, and then you continue higher. And I've showed examples about that. Um, so there, there you go. So just to turn the lights on for everybody, there you go. You can kind of see it just right there. And then also here's another one, similar thing, but you can see all the annotations there, right? I mean, even just going down to this little one right here. So this is very bullish. This is exactly what we want to see. So it's just another point of confluence to suggest right i mean first of all we got five waves to the downside second of all we're back testing previous area third of all we've been correcting for a long amount of time fourth of all bitcoin's in a in a fourth wave it's flagging out i mean there's a lot of different things right they're lowering rates which means right we should have a in theory a weaker dollar because uh, it's more loose monetary policy right which should in theory strengthen crypto um, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. So here's another diagram here that kind of shows the base of it getting built, right? So here's the flag here. There's the flag. We come down and you can see the base being built. It also looks very similar. Boom, 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 boom. 
right? We have this move here, this move here. So what the next move should be, obviously, is hopefully to the upside, right? So if you look a little bit further, you can see Bitcoin goes into a one and then it kind of goes into a two. Now, if we expand on that with, with theta, we could see something like this with theta, right? So, and there we go, we got them both side by side. Also, we have the fractal. We can't forget about the fractal, right? I mean, uh, you know, we, how we sort of have these two points here, we slam down, and you can see that little teepee shape right there, kind of like that little triangle shape, same thing here, that little triangle shape, and now we're starting to move up, so maybe we're moving up, right? And then what? And then maybe we can continue to break out of here. I mean, that's the idea. And that's, and you know, and it's all about having confluence in other things. Show me the evidence, right? If, if you know, if there's like a homicide detective trying to crack a case and he has enough evidence to put the person away, but it's not about enough, it's about more. It's about an overwhelming amount right so it's a slam dunk case and that's what we want we want a slam dunk case for bitcoin and the overall crypto market um so i wouldn't say it's slam dunk yet i still think there's a lot of work that needs to be done but i think we've built in enough time i mean remember this is going back all the way to march we're we're in the middle of september now so we've had plenty of time to consolidate, to accumulate, to, you know, to work out all of the kinks that needed to be worked out. While, for example, the stock market, like the S&P was breaking new all-time highs. The Dow, I think, was as well, right? We still need the Russell. And by the way, the Russell is the most likely the final nail in the coffin to help push the crypto market. I'm going to show you something in the Russell that's gonna blow your socks off based off what we've been talking about. So here's another screenshot here. And then here's another one too, right? So I did all these guys, I did all these screenshots for you guys so I can kind of go over them a little bit. But here's a fractal. So if we take that little, you know, this little teepee shape that we've been talking about, the current price. And basically, if we take this fractal and we zoom in very, very much, right? And we compare it to this. Well, then this is what we get. You can see how we started off like this, right? We hit the high, same thing here. We hit the high, we came down, you know, we kind of made this move up and then we took the low. Now it's not perfect. It's definitely different, but it's still pretty, it's pretty nice right now according to this we were supposed to come down right now bitcoin's still hovering around here so you know that's that's one thing we got to look out for now we could have a move all the way back down to like 55k right which would be confluent with this fractal here right and then from there that's when we start our ascent to the upside so you can you know pause the video and look at that and for those of you who care i'm building i'm actually building a an rc car uh from scratch i gotta pick out the the motor the servo the receiver the tires the rims the radio the body uh you know it, it's kind of like a kit i'm putting it together so it's gonna look cool uh hopefully i think the hardest part would be actually the paint job because i actually have to paint it too um but yeah I'm building it from the ground up and I'm going to be doing some racing with it at the local track. So anyways, if anybody's interested in RC, let me know. I actually just built this ramp at my buddy's house. Uh, me and him built this and uh, this thing gets flying, right? I mean, it's just like crypto, baby. Let's go to the moon. And uh, anyway, yeah, it's having it's it's good to have some fun. I mean, the if you if you guys have kids, this is like the best bonding experience you can possibly have. It doesn't matter boy or girl, right? I mean, I think RC cars, uh, 
you know, th this thing, this thing right here is a monster truck and it goes over 60 miles an hour. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it goes so fast. It even has a wheelie bar on it. Um, you can see the body's a little bit messed up, but these things are bashers and they, uh, we launch them in the air, do back flips, front flips, racing, um, you know, typical monster truck type of things. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you're sort of living a kind of like a, a boring, depressing life, just <laughs> then buy one of these. It'll put a smile on your face. So I'm going to jump into XRP and a couple of things, but take a look, listen to this. This is funny. Hopefully I don't get a copyright on that music. So uh, let's jump into XRP, but let me just jump in a little bit of the small time frames here with with Theta. So as we know, you know we're kind of at a, at a crossroads here. Remember, we got point A, point B, and we're right in the middle of the retracement level. So it's very, very a challenging area, and it's interesting that Fed Powell had to speak right in these retracement areas and we're still kind of stuck in there right nothing's nothing's broken yet um so the idea would be right remember the fractal we just shared like we have this little teepee shape right we kind of flag out and then we continue to rock it to the upside i mean that's obviously the bullish idea the other idea and i would say there's three ideas the other idea is we have three up and then we have three back down. We take out all this liquidity down here below a dollar oh nine, and then we shoot up like grandma stealing a Corvette. I mean, we go flying to the upside. So I think you know that would be also a very good contender here because this would be three, three and five a WXY or A, B and C. Right, and I think that would get us going pretty fast um, if we had doing doing something like that. Because anytime you you come down and you target liquidity and you break it, it's pretty it's pretty fast, right? So that's the third idea, uh, or is that the, no? That's the second idea. The third idea is to say that you know maybe we we pop the high a little bit more or that's it and we start rolling down right and we break this area and then we come up and then we retest it as resistance right so there's no reason to entertain this idea yet because it hasn't happened but that's that's it right there so we retest it as resistance and then we keep moving lower right and if we do move lower then what is it doing right what is it what is it doing well it's probably doing something like, you know, bottlenecking in here where we drop in, we kind of bottleneck a little bit, then we have one more final flush, a capitulation right back down to home base, right where we started this channel all, all along, right? Between, I would say between 84 and 64 cents. And then from there, that would have to be the low. Right. I mean, it would just have to be because um, that would be a clear one, two, three, four, five. Right. Um, from that point. Right. And then we would probably shoot up, flag out and then continue higher. Shoulder, head, shoulder. So that would be the idea. Right. By the way, if you can't hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. I I'm going to go over that one hour mark. Usually when I do that, it, it kind of stalls the algorithms. Um, I try, I try. Um, so let's let's look at, well, first of all, real quick on Theta here. Um, let me put the bull market support band up, right? There's a lot of bullish things as well. Remember, we had the daily nine buy. Look at this. We were talking about it a lot. 
and look what happened. We came up and we had a nine sell. That's another, remember I said I took partial profits? That's another reason why, right? Because we're in the retracement levels. We had a nine sell. I mean, it was perfect, right? So now we want a one to four candle correction and then a continuation or this nine could be a reversal and we can get three and three down, remember? So, but anyway, right? We had a nine, we came up. We had a nine, we came up. But we also remember this. I'm going to keep talking about it. We have the two week nine buy. And this is probably the most bullish thing on the theta chart is the fact that we had a perfected nine, we're back testing perfectly, right? Which means, in my opinion, we're gonna have a retracement. And that's what I feel like. Um, I could be wrong. And then another thing is, we go back down to the two day chart and we turn off this and let's turn on the bull market support band. Look where it's at. So in regards to the bull market support band, the idea was to Obviously, work your way down, have a base be built in here, right? And then start breaking above the bull market support band. And then what are we going to do? Flagging out. We're going to flag out in here, right? And then get higher into these retracement levels, probably stall out again, and then hopefully continue from there, right? So this is, this is really important that we, even if we, even if we came down you know, the other idea, too, is if we just keep basically going up and down, up and down, up and down, basically going sideways in here. That's really good, right? Because it's creating a base. Remember, look what happened back over here. Look at all of this sideways. It led to a monster 20x rally in the price of theta. I think that was 20x, right? So that was amazing. Um, so going sideways wouldn't be such a bad thing. It'd actually be pretty good. So, all right. Um, I mean, the same thing kind of with SHIB. It's got that little TP shape. It's got that same sort of both that bear flag here. We have five waves now. We had one, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, there's a couple different ways you can count it too, but overall, um, you know, you would kind of expect either us to bounce back into the bull market support band or hold some support here. And if that support breaks, this is really the area here. If that support breaks, then we're going to see if it was just a liquidity grab or if we come back up and we get rejected here. So, um, So as far as XRP goes, now just a little overview of XRP, right? The, the main idea here for XRP is that it's repeating the same type of fractal, which is a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, blast off, right? Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, blast off. So, and when you look closely, every single point has been matched up perfectly from the top to this, to the red zone, to the liquidity grab, to the retracement, to reaccumulation box one, reaccumulation box two, the, the liquidity grab in reaccumulate, uh, the reaccumulation box two, same thing here, right? So what's the next move? Blast off. I mean, we're right on the cusp of something massive happening. We had Grayscale launching a, you know, the, I guess they're gonna call it XRP, T, or I know they call like Grayscale, Bitcoin is GBTC. So I guess they would call it GXRP or something. I don't know. But then also Robinhood listed XRP as well. So that's a good thing. So, um, um, but it is a little bit weak when you compare it to, uh, let's look at XRP versus Bitcoin right now. It's kind of consolidating here. So uh, we're getting some dojis in here. We're holding the bull market support band, but we, we might need a little bit of a correction in XRP versus Bitcoin. Um, 
and then XRP versus ETH. I mean, look at that. Look, this is the weekly chart, guys. Look at this, the weekly chart. Green candle, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? We had, um, that's like 12 green candles there with exception of one little red one. But even that wasn't such a bad thing. So, you know, at some point we would expect some type of pullback. You can see we had a nine here. And look at the, the very one red candle is the nine. Um, we go to the two week chart, we're on a five. So we're still got some momentum onto the two week chart. But again, I would imagine this thing needs to pull back a little bit simply because we're running into some resistance you know, as far as this, all of these clusters of candles in here. Um, but I really love this impulse. I mean, XRP versus Ethereum is, in my opinion, very bullish because we had one, two, three, four, and five, right? And in the fifth wave, we had one, two, three, four, five. And now this is a wave one. Look how big wave one is. So we need a wave two. We're gonna flag out for a wave two. When does that happen? I don't know, it could happen soon. And then we get that wave three, four, and five, right? So, but we are running into some resistance. And if I pull the retracement here from this wave down, we still have a lot of space to go, right? I wanna see it get up to the 50 at least and to the 618, right? in that golden zone and then we can reevaluate but if we look at the small time frames like let's go to the daily um this could be a big b wave i'm not sure you know usually when you look at alt versus btc pairs there it's it it's even more complicated it's even more difficult to figure out um so this could be for XRP versus Ethereum, one, two, three, four, and five. And now we have an A, right? And I remember talking about this, this ascending triangle, we broke out. So boom, we have a three-way move up for B. So this could be A, B, and now we're coming down for C, which is going to back test the bull. Look at the bull market support, but look at that. That's like the Nike logo. I mean, that thing's like, was going down in the dumps and then bam, it just reversed quickly. So now we're angled up highly. So this could be a three wave move like this, down into the bull market support band, build a little bit of a base, and then blast off into outer space. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here is gonna happen, which means if that happens, we should see some, some stalling out in XRP uh, or Either that, Ethereum's gonna kick some butt soon. So, but uh, let, let's jump into the actual USD price here. Um, so I'm still, you know, I, I feel like I've been talking about this for a while, but we still have this gorgeous three-wave shape here. I can't get over it. I, I mean, that's an impulse. This is a three-wave pullback. We back tested the bull market support band and now we're starting to go up again. So that's a good thing. And now if we can flag out here a little bit and then continue to break out, that's gonna be even a better thing. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can accomplish that, right? So you can see when uh, Powell started speaking, uh, we started going up and now we're kind of going back down again. So um, it just goes to show, you know, whatever he says, it doesn't really matter. It's all, it's, it, 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 our markets are irrational. It's not like, okay, he's gonna cut, so that means the markets are gonna go down, or that means it's gonna go up. No, it doesn't matter really what he says. It, I mean, it does, but it, it, it matters over the long run. So whatever happens today doesn't really matter. Um, you can see this is a one, this is a two, this is a three, and maybe we have an ABC pullback. That looks like a nice ABC pullback. Wave four, let's come up and get a wave five. That would be nice. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then we pull back ABC, 
and then we continue higher. I mean, that's what I want to see, something like that. Uh, as far as the small, small time frames. Now, when we zoom out a little bit, we can see, obviously we've been, you know, this could be uh, uh, a one, two, one, two, right? Or actually, this is a one, two, right? And then this is a one, two of the third, three, four, five. So the whole thing becomes one, two, all of that's three, right? And now we have an A, B, C, look at that three-way move. That's a flat right there. Now, it could go down further, but so far it's holding support. So what I wanna point out is this three-way move here. I mean, look at that. That's an, you know, we have an impulse to the upside and we have a three-way pullback. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, right? So obviously it could come down a little bit further and it could be an ex you know, a, a more of an extended. I mean, heck, it could even come down to here and back test, and it still be a nice three wave shape with the expectation of it going back up, right? So again, dollar cost averaging is probably the right thing to do. Um, because overall, when we look at the overall structure, at least over the last couple years, um, we can see this choppy sideways sort of mess and people look at it and they don't even like to talk about it anymore because they have no idea what to make of it, right? It's just so bizarre, it's so foreign because you know, when you look at Theta, when you look at Filecoin, when you look at a lot of other coins, they all look similar in nature, but when you look at XRP, it's a completely different animal. And I think that's a lot of to do with the ODL market and things like that, on-demand liquidity. But the overall idea here for XRP is that this is a this is flagging out for a move higher, right? We got one, two, three, four, five waves up. We have A, complex B, one, two, three, four, five. So we have a three-wave move down. So we have a, a move higher and a three-way pullback. And then we have this impulse off of that three-way pullback. And now that impulse is creating what? A three-way pullback. Now, you can say that this is a three, three, and a three, so W, X, Y. Or you can say that this is a one, two, one, two. Whatever the case is, you know, it, it seems like the overall direction should be um, maybe we come down and flag out a little bit, but ultimately breaking to the upside. Now, we have the election coming up. We have a lot of different situations coming. So we could get a curveball, right? We could get a big curveball. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of hard to hard, hard to gauge that right now. Um, but overall, you know, I think this is uh, flagging out pretty nicely. I mean, I would just pay attention to this downward resistance line here. You know, and then the contrary to that, you can see this channel here. So what we don't want to do is fall back to that lower part of that channel. Um, even the middle, right? We want to get away from it. So anyways, all in all, it's looking pretty fairly decent right now. Again, we have a nice three way pullback. We're holding the bull market support band, right? We have this impulse this massive impulse. And then also what's even really bullish is it came all the way down, it back tested and then it got bought right back up with another three-way pullback, right? And all of that is coming from this one year long three-way pullback, right? So I think it's just a, a matter of time before this thing I think gets going pretty nicely here. So we could draw a little bit of a, a trend line here maybe even a channel if you want um so i mean impulse flagging out what more can you say 
So as far as the small time frames go, I think I just peeked at it. Um, yeah, we got this another three-way move here. Now, let's talk bearish ideas. Um, this could be basically like a one, two, and then this is a one, two, and we're about to fall down, kind of like an ascending triangle, right? Actually, it looks pretty good as an ascending triangle. We come up here, right, and then we come down and we, we, we sell off into the bull market support band. And then we sort of reevaluate from there. Um, but that's definitely a possibility. And the measured move of that bearish sort of descending triangle would be you know, approximately right at that bull market support band. So about 53 cents. You know, you can also look at it from, you know, you have a trend line here, right? You got a trend line here. It could be creating some kind of triangle, right? Where you have, you know, A, B, C, D, and then we get E, and then maybe we break out. Or you can say A, B, C, D, E, and then we break down. So, uh, you know, I would be watching these two trend lines here to kind of get an overall sense of, of where it's going. Um, but I think overall, whatever way it breaks, it's just a short-term move in the much larger move. Because again, even if it does break down, it could be very bullish. Why? Because if this is a three-way pullback and then we have a one, two, three, four, five, we have a five-way move to the upside, well, then that means we need a three-way pullback. And as I'm saying that, it's pumping. So we could get three down. This can come up and get three up, and then we can come back down and get three back down later. And it could be a larger three-way pullback like that and then go higher right and flag out so it could be more complicated right but again dollar cost averaging what does it matter if it's a couple pennies right what's a few pennies amongst friends nothing um until xrp hits a hundred dollars and now you're talking tens of thousands of dollars and it might be a little different no i'm just kidding but you know um, how high do I think XRP can can really, really, really go in the next 10 years? I think it can literally hit between 50 and and $100 within the next 5 to 10 years. I think that's totally possible. Now, there's a lot of guys who think, no, that's way too little. It's more likely going to be like $500 to $1,000. And then you have some people say that, you know, it's going to be $10,000. And I'm saying, look, I I'm not in that camp. I don't think it's possible unless you know you have a massive transition away from uh you know uh, uh, basically embracing ripple and xrp as a new world reserve currency or basically ripple attacking the derivative problem which is a multi-hundred trillion dollar problem the the derivatives of the world right so derivative the derivative market is massive so if they can tackle that along with payments, along with, you know, the bond market and, and, some, and stuff like that, collateralize, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that could play a big role. And I'm not real savvy in all of that. I would turn towards like people like Zach Rector, uh, Digital Asset Investor, Digital Perspectives, even Crypto Lulu uh, or Lewis, I don't know his name, but guys like that, uh, you know, they're they're more in depth on on all that stuff. I mean, when you talk about the Nostro Vostro accounts or whatever they call it, um, you talk about, I mean, just really anything uh, and involving tokenization distributed ledger i mean xrp's all on it right so 
um, yes, it's possible that that could happen. Or like ISO 2020 or 222 or something like that. I, I can't remember um, off the top of my head, but basically, you know, the SWIFT system, things like that. But I think the main thing would be the Forex market and it being sort of that neutral. The big thing with XRP is it, if it could get to $1,000. I don't I don't think it can get to 10000 I just, I mean, if it did, hey, I'll be completely cool with that. But I'm trying to be in the room. You know, I'm a chart guy. I'm an analyst. And I, and, I, and I can see, you know, when you talk about big numbers like that, that's pure speculation. There's no, nothing to back it up until it happens right but again i'm in the camp uh, of this cycle you know between five and ten dollars and depending how the wave goes up now if the wave goes up a, a specific way then i can say maybe 12 to 15 dollars now if we can and and the very very high end of that would be 27 dollars. that would be like the max i think that we can hit in one wave now when you talk about a cycle or two cycles or three cycles ahead of that and we have xrp integration with you know japan and uh S sbi and you know all that stuff and and the forex market and you know a new president regulations you know um and adopting crypto and it actually being uh, a neutral bridge currency for a lot of the world's or all the world's money really then we can see you know a 500 a thousand or even a five thousand dollar xrp i mean it's possible i just don't i never 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 talk about that because it's just it's just highly speculative but if we can at least hit five dollars or ten dollars i mean that's still a lot of money but uh, over time, you know, I'm, I'm never going to sell my XRP, all of it. I'm going to hold some of it for, I'm going to pass it down to my son. And, and uh, you know, and maybe by the time, maybe in 20 years, it'll be worth hopefully millions of dollars. I mean, that's the idea, right? And just live off the interest, right? That's why it's important for me to just continue to accumulate as much as I can because by the time 10 years happens, it's going to happen quick. Think about where Bitcoin's going to be in 10 years. Obviously, it's going to be a lot higher. So why park my money in the bank when I can park it into crypto? Here's an interesting uh, diagram here. Yeah, it's called the Nostro Vostro bank accounts. And the SWIFT system, you can see the XRP market cap, kind of like Western Union, things like that. I mean, it really comes down to the debt problem because eventually, you know, the debt has to be figured out, right? And I'm, and you see my thumbnails and stuff. I, you know, a lot of people say ten thousand dollar XRP, or you know, I don't do clickbait type of stuff like that. Like, I just think it's sort of not productive. Um, now, ten dollar XRP, I I can totally jump on that. Um, and then once we get to ten dollars, then we can start talking about twenty. We, when we get to twenty, then we can start talking about thirty. You know what I mean? So, but to go from fifty cents to ten thousand dollars, it's just like what's going on now. We can see it from the speculative, from the fundamental perspective, yes. But from the technical perspective and the market cap, it would just be have to be crazy. But uh, I think this is old. This is this is two thousand seventeen. Now it's like thirty trillion dollars. So anyways, uh, I got to wrap it up. It's getting very long here. The, the, the point is, um, I mean, the two week chart, I mean, we're, we're, we're building a base on the bull market support band. I just hope that it's not going to reverse because, you know, it's flipping from green to red, green to red, green to red. Um, so remember, we're still in this triangle, right? A, B, C, D. And then we had a three way pullback for wave E. Right, so we're in this contracting triangle, A, B, C, D, E. We just finished wave E. We just had a wave one, a wave two. We could get that wave three. It could happen very fast, guys. And uh, again, with the cutting cycle, right? Um, or with the hiking cycle back in that Bitcoin uh, back over here, 
right? It lasted about 100 days or, you know, about, I would say about 50 to 100 days. And that was it. And then it was, that was the bottom. So contrary to that, if you look at what's going on, remember, it's the same fractal from here to here, just inverse. And instead of it's a hike, it's a, it's a cut. So depending what happens, it could be 80 days down or it could be 80 days up or whatever the amount is. So let me, let's look at the Russell. And I think the Russell is the grand finale because that'll be the key. So here's the Russell 2000. It's kind of like the S&P 500. I mean, it's a stock market. It's basically the, the, the 2000 companies out there that, you know, the, so the small cap companies. Um, so obviously we could say that this is a rise, crash, retrace, and then now we got to go down into reaccumulation and then break out later on, right? I mean, that could be one idea. Um, so the other idea is that this is a, a three-way pullback, boom, boom, boom. And now we're starting our, our move back to the upside, right? I mean, because if you look at this thing overall, we're just going up, we're going up, we're going up, right? Kind of similar to here where we had a top, we came down, we oscillated a little bit, we hit the low, then we came up. Same thing here. We came down, we oscillated a little bit, we hit the low, and now we go up. So I'm not sure how it's going to look, but let this is what I really wanted to show you. Look at this. Uh, let me go to the daily chart. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down. So you see that, right? What is it doing? Remember what we talked about. We drop in, and now what are we doing? We're bottlenecking in here. We drop in and we're going boom, 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 right? Usually when that happens, you shoot to the downside like that. But remember, the chart's flipped upside down. So when I flip it right side up, we actually get a full-on breakout above the all-time high, which would be very, very, very good for crypto, right? Because again, when we look at the bottlenecking type of fractals, and I zoom in here like to the four-hour chart, same thing that happened over here where we dropped in, we bottlenecked, boom, 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 we hit the low, right? We were talking about this a lot. Same thing right here where we sort of did this, we hit the high. But then also we did it over here a little bit where we kind of dropped in, we had this bottlenecking, bam, we hit the low. So if that's the case, then the Russell, right, we would expect it to potentially break to the upside according to its you know bottlenecking nature now this is just an idea that you know it's a little bit subjective on what that really means um but as far as the small time frames go or the daily we have a wave one we have an expanded flat or a regular flat for wave two and then we have a one two and then we have a one two and now we have another one, two. So what's going on now? I don't know. Um, I mean, could this be three down, three up, and now we're getting another three down before we're up? So W, X, Y, kind of like a running flat. I mean, that's still yet to be determined. But anyway, I think that'll do it for this video. Um, we're right at the retracement levels. I would probably expect a little bit of a pullback here. Now, I, I, I can assure you that everybody watching this video doesn't own the Russell nor care about the Russell. Neither do I. But the point is, we need the Russell to break out because that's what needs to happen for, for crypto, right? I mean, it doesn't necessarily, but I mean, that's what we want. Um, but just looking at Bitcoin real fast, once again, we have a doji candle. We have a red doji candle, which is not that good. We have three hours until this candle closes. If it closes like this, it's not that good because it's kind of like a doji, right? We don't want that. Um, but then again, right, you have, and this is really, really what I wanted to talk about. We have a five-wave move now in Bitcoin. One, two, three. All of that's three, four, and five, right? So we have a five-wave move. 
So maybe this is going to come down. A, B, C. All the way back down to 55K. We're at 60K now. Imagine going all the way down to 55K. That would still be bullish, right? Because we have a five-way move up, and now we're flagging out, and then eventually we can break to the upside. But right now, it's actually looking a little bit bullish here, right? So that's a little bit uh, subjective on that. So also I have a little bit of a shoulder, a little bit of a head head and shoulders here uh i want to see actually one more break because look it look where we're at we're right below the bull market support band i want to break above and then i want to abc on the bull market support band holding it as support i mean that's what that's what i would really like to see but we'll see what happens um is there anything else that this could be well if this is a five wave move, one, two, three, four, five, and this is a three way pullback, and this is like an A, and this is a B, and now we're gonna get C, we can get something like this too, and then break out. So let's see what happens over the next couple days, um, and uh, we'll go from there. But anyways, thank you for tuning in, and uh, if you can, drop a like, drop a comment, let me know what you think. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.